Now again, it's something worth bearing in mind that they've probably been awake for close on three hours now, during which period they would have been moving almost constantly as a calculated guess. So three hours of constant movement, they would have covered many miles and deserve a short break that we can see them enjoying now. It is also getting very hot. So the combination of the heat and the fact that they've been running around since in all likelihood 4 o'clock this morning. Is the reason why they are having a short break here. Now in all this excitement, I didn't actually count how many there were. Was it six? It's, yeah, I think six is the figure that comes to mind of how many were here initially. This individual in the background is showing signs that it may have heard something or may want to move off, but it is showing intent looking to the north. I'm fairly convinced that the individual that rocketed past us in a southerly direction earlier will come back to this area where we find ourselves now to rejoin, unless it has already managed to rejoin. Well, the third potential variable is that it was a member of another pack simply wanting to get out of here before it got itself into trouble with these individuals. Now I find that unlikely but it is a potential theory. There's been a lot of wild dog movements in this area and from as far as I'm aware it sounds like three or four different packs that are kind of all overlapping on one another's home ranges. They don't have strict territories like lion and leopard do or as strict as lion and leopard, should I say, rather than the fact that lions and leopards have got very strict. They're all relatively loose, I think. It's not cast in stone, a set territory, like it would be for us with an exact fence line. Um, there's a few more grey areas with animal territories, but with wild dogs, they've got home, range, home ranges, and they can be huge. They don't necessarily have set demarcated territories and the reason for this is because they do cover such large distances Question from Carolyn, I believe it is. Morning, Carolyn, and welcome on board. Very lucky morning to be sharing with one another here. And Carolyn's asked which animals do wild dogs hunt, and the answer to that is not a set set animal. They've got a very wide uh, variety of prey items that they can feed on, depending on the area, depending on the size of the pack, but. In this area, impala-sized antelope would be their main prey, as far as what I've seen in the time that I've spent in the Sabi Sands. And at this time of year, specifically, a baby impala would probably provide the majority of their food. They are easy to catch, easy to eat, and the wild dogs do do exceptionally well when it comes to hunting young impala. I've seen sightings where they've managed to kill four or five in one one chase, one one event. So they do have a wide variety of prey, but what needs to be understood about wild dog and their prey is that 
they often run their prey down to a point of exhaustion. Not always, but often the prey are really, really tired by the time the wild dog do bundle them over and then start feeding on them. Now, even though they are quite small animals, the wild dogs, due to the fact that their prey is so tired and exhausted by the time they do get brought down, they can't put up much of a fight and therefore this allows the, the smaller, these dogs, which are relatively small predators, to then often disembowel and, and tear their prey alive, tear their prey apart alive. They don't suffocate their prey. Very often it's uh, more of a tearing and ripping affair, so not easy to watch wild dogs hunting once they have caught something, because it is often quite a gruesome affair. I think the other dog could be coming back. I can just see them all facing to the south. And I think I can hear Texan coming back in the other vehicle, so he maybe managed to stay with that other individual. If we can just change our angle here in case we do get the other individual coming back. This could well be the end of their morning activities. They may get up and move a few hundred meters or keep shifting around to find shade. But I'm guessing that this is the end of their morning activities. So until this afternoon, we can expect them to probably not do too much. We will stay here for a few more minutes, though, certainly, and enjoy watching them. Because, like I say, they are exceptionally hard animals to find. They're highly endangered. And since I've been here, which is just over a month now, this is the first time I've seen them. So that hopefully puts things into perspective for you guys. And will also help you understand why I left the dwarf mongoose in such a hurry earlier. when I heard that Texan had found them. The unmistakable characteristic of theirs. notice they do swivel those large ears around from side to side. I think now mainly to get rid of flies, but they are also used to rejoin uh, with, with other pack members when they do bombshell in different directions when, when
enhancing those huge ears certainly will help in them relocating the rest of the pack through their vocalizations or simply from audio back to pack lifestyle adaption for hunt members and potentially another theory would be to pick up the audio of any potential predators like lion that may be sneaking up on them sadly for wild dog especially in this area lion often tend to prove their biggest enemy or biggest threat and once the pups start running with the pack from a young age of about three months we sadly often hear of them being lost to lions but these big ears will certainly help them in detecting any lions that may be creeping up on them the problem is with wild dogs is that because they move so quickly through the bush they can often get themselves into trouble they could run into a pride of lion um, I've seen that once before when wild dog were hunting along a grassy airstrip and they were chasing impala from one end of the airstrip down the, to the other and there was lion waiting at the other end of the airstrip completely through default and the lioness that was closest to the wild dog in front chasing a baby impala literally let the baby impala pass by a few meters it would have been very easy for her to have caught that impala but instead the lioness left the impala and waited for the wild dog to take a few steps closer and then pounced on the wild dog so this is an example of how they can come unstuck with lion and with their hunting techniques or habits Now it would be interesting to know where the other pack members are. We can see these three lying here and we know for certain there's another one not far from them. But where the other two are, if my memory was correct and that there were six initially, means that there are two missing. But again, they could be nearby in, in, under any one of these shady bushes. I think because we have had a great sighting in that I don't think they are going to do anything more it would be nice for us to make space and allow some other game vehicles into the sighting of which I know there are a lot on the way now that it's established that now that it's been established that they aren't going to be going anywhere and they are going to be lying up here so we will leave them but there's a strong chance we will come back here this afternoon in the hope that they will continue to perform for us. Sadly, this is a boundary road, so where they are lying now, if they continue in a northerly direction, we will not be able to follow them. But there's a chance we could see them this afternoon. If not, they're 
I think we've had such a wonderful sighting this morning that we really... Oh, oh, there's one that just chased off. Oh, look at the Zimbala coming straight towards us. Straight towards us, across the road, across the road, across the road. Okay, that, that Impala looks tired here, come on. Here we go, folks, as we're about to leave and thinking everything was done, look what we've got. Okay, hold on. This is incredible. Look at this. Trick is not to over a wild dog. That Impala was very tired, folks, so I think they are going to get it. I could be wrong. But the Impala looks so tired and now we need to find a way in here because it's thick. But we need to stay with them. Oh, this I think is our spot to try. Okay, hold on folks, this could get a bit bumpy. But I think they are going to get this Impala. It looked tired and they were well rested. Just going to switch off and listen. Thing. We will just keep creeping through. And then hopefully, some pup did have a vision of them not very long ago. Um, still heading towards where we are. So, those other pack members that we couldn't see. got away luckily but hard to tell because these pack members that we can see around us here may simply have have been left out or left behind in the hunt and now they are stopping and listening and by us stopping and listening and watching them if the other pack members did manage to take down an impala these individuals that are lagging behind will lead us to it That was crazy, folks, coming and running straight past us. I mean, those other two pack members literally, through default, I think, managed to head those impalas straight back towards their sleeping companions. Oh, I thought they were going to get that impala. And I still may have got it, so... It's difficult for you to see, folks, but there is one wild dog that we can see ahead of us in the thick bush, and we are just going to try and stay with it. At least if we stay with one, it may lead us back to other pack members if they did manage to, to take it down an Impala. Woo! Mount is racing, folks. Odd. Sadly, don't know what you got to see out of that whole sequence. Neither do I. <laughs> Neither does Jason. Um, but I hope we did manage to show you at least the Impala crossing the road with the wild dog running behind it. Um, okay, wonderful. Thank you. I've just got an update from Alex. 